The Battle of White Mountain Czech, Bitva na Bile Hor, German, was an important battle in the early stages of the Thirty Years' War. It was fought on 8 November 1620 a. C. An army of 15,000 Bohemians and mercenaries under Christian of Anhalt was defeated by 27,000 men of the combined armies of Ferdinand II, Holy Roman Emperor led by Charles Bonaventure de Longueville, Count of Bukhoi and the German Catholic League under Johann Serkles, Count of Tilly at Bila Hora, White Mountain, near Prague. The site is now part of the city of Prague. The battle marked the end of the Bohemian period of the Thirty Years' War and decisively influenced the fate of the Czech lands for the next 300 years. Its aftermath drastically changed the religious landscape of the Czech lands after two centuries of Protestant dominance. Roman Catholicism retained majority in the Czech lands until the late 20th century. Prelude in the early 17th century most of the Bohemian estates, although under the dominion of the predominantly Roman Catholic Holy Roman Empire, had large Protestant populations, and had been granted rights and protections allowing them varying degrees of religious and political freedom. In 1617, as Emperor Matthias lay dying, his cousin Ferdinand—a fiercely devout Roman Catholic and proponent of the Counter-Reformation—was named his successor as Holy Roman Emperor and King of Bohemia. This led to deep consternation among many Bohemian Protestants, who feared not only the loss of their religious freedom, but also of their traditional semi-autonomy, under which many of the estates had separate, individual constitutions governing their relationship with the empire, and where the king was elected by the local leaders, Ferdinand, who would become Emperor Ferdinand II following Matthias. Death in 1619 saw Protestantism as inimical to the empire, and wanted to impose absolutist rule on Bohemia while forcefully encouraging conversion to the Roman Catholic faith. He also hoped to reclaim church properties which had been seized by Protestants at the start of the Reformation decades earlier, and to do away with the electorate, the body of princes who chose the Holy Roman Emperor and who had considerable power over imperial policy, particularly galling to Protestants were perceived violations of Emperor Rudolf II's 1609 Letter of Majesty, which had ensured religious freedom throughout Bohemia. In May, 1618, wanting to air their grievances over this and other issues, a group of Bohemian noblemen met representatives of the emperor at the royal castle in Prague. The meeting ended with two of the representatives and their scribe being thrown out a high window and seriously injured. This incident, known as the Second Defenestration of Prague, triggered the Bohemian Revolt. In November 1619, Elector Palatine Frederick V, who like many of the rebels was a Calvinist, was chosen as King of Bohemia by the Bohemian electorate. Topic. Battle Topic. In 1620, now fully established as emperor, Ferdinand II set out to conquer Bohemia and make an example of the rebels. King Frederick and his military commander, Prince Christian of Anhalt, had organized a Protestant army of 30,000 men. Ferdinand countered with a force of 25,000, many of them seasoned soldiers, under the capable leadership of Field Marshal Tilly, a Roman Catholic Spanish Flemish nobleman. Tilly's army enjoyed the advantage of including two successful military leaders, Tilly himself and the future General Wallenstein. Tilly S force was made up of two distinct groups, imperial troops commanded by Charles Bonaventure de Longueville, Count of Bukhoi, and soldiers of the German Catholic League, directly under Tilly. All of the armies of the day employed numerous mercenaries, including, by some definitions, Tilly himself. Serving with the Catholic League as an official observer was the future father of modern philosophy, René Descartes. After conquering most of western Bohemia, the imperial army made for Prague, the Bohemian capital, then in rebel hands. The Bohemians attempted to block them by setting up defensive positions, which the imperial army simply bypassed. Force marching his men, Christian of Anhalt managed to get ahead of the imperial army just before Prague. He thus gained an advantageous position on the White Mountain, actually a low plateau, but had little time to set up defensive works. Enthusiasm for joining battle was low on both sides. 
After the reverses of the previous several weeks, Christian of Anhalt's army had been reduced to about 15,000 men, with little prospect of victory, the mercenaries on both sides had not been paid in months, and with winter approaching, cold, wet, weather made for less than ideal combat conditions. On 8 November a small imperial force was sent to probe the Protestant flank. To their surprise, the Bohemians retreated at their advance. Tilly quickly sent in reinforcements, and the Bohemian flank began to crumble. Anhalt tried to retrieve the situation by sending forward infantry and cavalry led by his son Christian II. The cavalry charged into the imperial infantry, causing significant casualties, but Tilly countered with his own cavalry, forcing the Bohemian horsemen to retire. The Bohemian infantry, who were only now approaching the imperial army, saw the cavalry retreating, at which they fired one volley at extreme range before retreating themselves. A small group of imperial cavalry began circling the Protestant forces, driving them to the middle of the battlefield. With the Bohemian army already demoralized, company after company began retreating, most without having actually entered the battle. Tilly and his imperial cavalrymen advanced with 2,000 Bavarian hussars, steadily pushing Protestant forces back to the Star Palace just west of Prague, where the rebels tried without success to establish a line of defense. The Bohemian army was no match for the Emperor Ferdinand's troops. The actual battle lasted only an hour and left the Bohemian army in tatters. Some 4,000 Protestants were killed or captured, while imperial losses amounted to only about 700. Aftermath With the Bohemian army destroyed, Tilly entered Prague and the revolt collapsed. King Frederick fled the country with his wife Elizabeth, hence his nickname the Winter King. Forty-seven leaders of the insurrection were put on trial, and twenty-seven of them were executed in Prague's Old Town Square on what came to be called the Old Town Square Execution. Amongst those executed were Christoph Harant and Jan Gesenius. Today, twenty-seven crosses have been laid into the cobblestones as a tribute to those victims. An estimated five-sixths of the Bohemian nobility went into exile soon after the Battle of White Mountain, and their properties were confiscated. There remained a strong Protestant army in Silesia under the command of Johann Georg of Hohenzollern, Duke of Krnov, which continued fighting the Imperial Army in Moravia and in what today is Slovakia until 1623. In 1621, the Emperor ordered all Calvinists and other non-Lutherans to leave the realm in three days or to convert to Roman Catholicism. In 1622, he forbade practice of the Lutheran faith. In 1626, he ordered all Lutherans most of whom had not been involved in the revolt to convert or else leave the country. By 1627, Archbishop Herrick of Prague and Yaroslav Borzida of Martinice set out to convert the heretics, as they were termed, by peaceful means, most Bohemians converted, but a significant Protestant minority remained. Spanish troops, seeking to encircle their rebellious Dutch provinces, seized the Palatinate lands. With the prospect of Protestantism being overrun in Germany, Denmark entered the struggle. Sweden was to join the Protestant forces in 1630. Before the war about 151,000 farmsteads existed in the lands of the Bohemian crown, while by the year 1648 only 50,000 remained. At the same time the number of inhabitants decreased from 3 million to only 800,000. The result of the 1620 battle brought two centuries of recatholicization of the Czech lands and the decline of the Czech-speaking aristocracy and elite as well as the Czech language accompanied with the growing influence of German-speaking elites, a process that was slowed down by the Czech national revival since the late 18th century. Czech nationalist historians and writers such as Alois Jurasek have referred to the 17th and 18th century in the Czech lands as the Dark Age. See also Litoratic Veda References Topic Sources Topic The History of the Thirty Years' War by Friedrich Schiller Luca Cristini, sixteen eighteen to sixteen forty eight La Guerra dei Thirty Anni, Volume One da sixteen eighteen Al one six three two two oh oh seven ISBN nine seven eight 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 nine oh three oh one oh one eight 
Luca Cristini, 1618 to 1648, La Guerra dei 30 anni, Volume 2 da 1632, all 1648 2007, ISBN 9788890310125. Bohemia in History, Cambridge, UK, Cambridge UP, 1998, Print. Helferic, Trint J. The Thirty Years' War: A Documentary History. Indianapolis, Hackett Company, Inc., 2009. Print. Joseph V. Polizensky, Thirty Years' War, University of California Press, June 1971, La Guerra dei Trentani, da un conflitto locale a una guerra europea nella prima meta del Seicento, Torino, Inaudi, 1982. Tomas Kleisner, Giovanni Pietro de Pomi's Medal of the Battle of the White Mountain. Topic. External links Topic. Johnson, L. 1996. Central Europe, Enemies, Neighbors, Friends, Enemies, Neighbors, Friends. Oxford University Press, USA. ISBN 9780198026073. Guthrie, W.P. Battles of the Thirty Years' War, From White Mountain to Nordlingen, 1618–1635. Greenwood Press. ISBN 9780313320230. (1998). M. Bohemia in History. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521431552. Helferich, T. 2009. The Thirty Years' War, A Documentary History. Hackett Publishing. ISBN 9781603843381. Bellum. C. 2008. Battle of White Mountain 8 November 1620.